All right, you're almost done with level one, and this last part you really do know how to do, so I'm not going to take a lot of time on it. All you're doing is writing an equation based off of a real-world situation or a graph or table or what else, which you know how to do. So the graph below represents the Miguel, uh, represents uh, Miguel's savings each month. Write an equation uh, that would model this relationship where S is Miguel's total savings and M is the number of months he has saved. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, yes, you really should use the S and M, that they use in here, um, but we also have been writing all of our equations with y and x, so if you want to do that too, really doesn't bother me as long as you're making sure you're matching up the independent and dependent variable. Y needs to represent the independent, uh, sorry, dependent, and x needs to represent the independent. Okay, so since s is representing total savings, that would be our y, and m, because that's dependent, and then m is number of months, which is independent, so it's going to be x. Anywho, Moving on, we just need to figure out what's happening to x, so we know that constant proportionality. So looking at your graph, now you can look at number 1 here, because remember that's the easiest to look for. I always look for 1 on my x and try and see if I can find, figure out where the y is, because that's a very clear constant proportionality. But um, it's a little bit hard to tell. Like I think I could guess what it is. I'm thinking I know, but I want to be 100% certain because maybe it's off just a little bit. So I'm going to go to this point here that meets right at an intersection. And that says it's two months and it's $30. So remember, to find your K, you can always take Y divided by X to get that. So if we do 30 divided by 2, we get 15, which makes sense. That's kind of what I was thinking based off of where one hit in the um, in the line. Um, so for our equation, we simply put y equals 15x. Very simple. Okay. We wouldn't want to use 30 because that's times 2. So it would really be 2 times 15 gave us that 30. So you want to make sure it's y equals 15x. If you wanted to say s equals 15m to use those variables, that's fine. I really don't care either way. Okay, one more example, and then you're going to try one on your own. So now it's just a real world situation, but you can figure it out. We're going to still use our y equals what's happening to x. So on a field trip, there is one chaperone for every seven students. Um, write an equation for the number of students y, so that's our dependent, um, that there are for x chaperones, which is um, independent, right? Like you have to have the chaperone and the students depend on having those chaperones, okay? Like our field trip coming up. So um, we have one chaperone. They're very nice and give us one to make it easy. And we know there's seven for every seven students. So that means every time I get a new chaperone, I'm going to have seven more students, et cetera, et cetera. And so we get y equals seven x. Okay, real simple. Okay, I'm sure you were able to figure that out. So you've got two more to try. They both happen to be graphs. Use the trick from the video to help to write your equations. Then you need to get a teacher signature for that. And then you're on to level one formative. You've got this. Keep it rolling.